Uh, today we're going to be talking about the shad, uh, otherwise known as Pomatoma saltatrix, previously saltator. Um, other names, looking at elf, uh, overseas bluefish tailor in uh, Australia, uh, here also in car parks, burrowing bream bush carp, those are the kind of names you're looking at. Um, probably the most targeted fish in, definitely in KZN, but probably across South Africa. Uh, your minimum legal size is 30 centimeters and you're allowed to keep four. Most of the fish early in the season you're going to be looking at about 25 centimeters. They're normally just below the numbers, um, but they do grow to quite substantial size. They grow to about 1.2 meters and uh, that's about 15 kilos and a 10 year old fish, but really you're going to catch them more than say four or five kilos. Uh, most of your fish are going to be under a kilo. They migrate from the Cape up into KZN, that's during the winter, so very similar to the sardines, how they move up and then spawn, and then the, the larvae get drifted all the way back down into the Cape, where they grow up again and then move back. Um, there has been scientific evidence that in Longobarn itself, they, they, they actually spawn and uh, raise themselves up, but we have seen movements from the tagging data of fish moving from Longobarn down in the Cape all the way up to KZN and back again. So they do move quite a far away. Shad are extremely vicious. They eat anything that moves and when they get into a feeding frenzy they will just cut and lacerate any little bait fish in the area. You actually often see in the gullies you'll see little pinkies that have been cut in half just drifting around because they, they're just so rampant when they come to get into that feeding mode. In terms of targeting, uh, my absolute favorite method, short piece of nylon coated wire, number four o hook, and a live pinky. You just hook them through the back, drift it into a gully, and yeah, every time is a, is a coconut. Uh, but otherwise, you're looking at, if you want to do ground bait traces, you do the normal shared trace, which is a three-way swivel, short piece of line onto a sinker, then you've got another short piece of line, the shared cork, and a short piece of steel with a hook. Now the shared cork is just to keep the bait off the bottom, um, also, we normally like using red, some guys like using white. The thought behind using the red cork is that it actually attracts the shad and gets them into the mood. Um, but yeah, as I say, when they're in a feeding frenzy, they'll eat literally anything. Put a piece of tin foil onto your hook and they'll eat that. Uh, other methods, uh, spoons, extremely effective. Um, for shad, it's not as quick a predator as say a kingy or garrick, so you're using a, a slower spoon. So an s bend spoon, S for slow. You know, retrieve it and they flick it nicely like that. Um, with the shad spooning, you just got to figure out what depth they're at because that's often the difference between actually getting the takes and not. So, cast, start retrieving immediately, so keep it just under the surface. If that doesn't work, cast, let it sink, count for two seconds, then bring it in, and then try again if you haven't got any bites, four seconds, six seconds, and you'll figure out at what depth the shad are feeding. Um, then, if you don't want to do ground bait, don't want to do spoons, drift baiting is an extremely effective method. So that's either using a sinker or without a sinker, um, but very light running sinker along the line, and then drifting in likely areas. Your shad are going to occur in estuaries to a lesser extent, but mainly along sandy beaches and then in your rocky gullies. So, pretty much along the entire coast, you will find a place where you can catch shad. They are particularly fond of little back bays. So in the Transca you often get the little point and then a bay at the back. In that bay itself often cooks with shad. The shad are extremely popular game fish. They are used not just for the eating quality but also to use as live baits. Shark, Garrick, Cobb all absolutely love a live shad. So remember if you are catching them and using them as live bait if they still fall under your maximum allotment of four per day. So you can't keep four and use another four for live bait. They have extremely sharp teeth, so just be careful when you are taking hooks out and whatnot. When they do bite you, their saliva has got an anticoagulant in it, which means it makes your blood not clot. So when they bite you, often your blood will stream for, for quite a long time. So just do be careful of the hooks and uh, the teeth themselves. As we said, the, the catch restrictions, the close season, uh, September through to the end of November, right? Um, you're not allowed to catch any shad. Um, you're only allowed four per day that's outside of the closed season and with that uh, in, with the implementation of those regulations you're really seeing the shad population boom again so it's a real good sign to show how impl implementing these uh, rules properly how they can actually positively affect the, the fish populations 
Uh, tackle wise, light tackle. The, the lighter you can go, the better, the more fun you'll have. Um, all the way down to fishing fly tackle. You can even use a fly rod with a small little coffee grinder to drift uh, little baits. But yeah, the shad, very popular. Not a closed, uh, closed fish anymore. Um, yeah, get out there, catch some shad. Cheers, guys.